Hello friends, I hope you are doing great. In this video lecture, I'll be talking about chemistry of natural products. And this is the new playlist that is going to be added in my YouTube channel. Previously, I have several channels that I have, uh, several playlists I would say that I have already added in my channel regarding organic chemistry, including in stereochemistry, retrosynthesis, UV visible spectroscopy, IR spectroscopy, and later on I will be adding playlist about NMR spectroscopy and mass spectrometry as well but today I'm going to talk about natural products chemistry and this will be the first video of that playlist and I'll try to add many more videos regarding natural product chemistry in this playlist thank you for watching and let's move on so natural product chemistry is the chemistry that deals with the naturally occurring substances or naturally occurring chemicals that are present in wide variety of organisms ranging from bacteria to human beings so every living entity contains chemicals and natural product chemistry deals with those chemicals like it helps us to understand what sort of compounds or molecules are present inside small organisms in animals in birds in plants in human beings in sea uh, organisms and so on and so forth so cells of organisms plants fungi bacteria lichens insects animals produce a large variety of organic compounds so many substances were obtained anciently e.g food stuffs building materials dyes medicinals and other extracts from nature so crude aqueous extracts of certain plants and animals provided pigments such as indigo and alizarin so these are the two pigments that are used as a coloring agents in clothing industry or textile industry and they widely occur in the crude extracts of certain plants and animals so indigo is a colored substance as well as alizarin and both are natural products next example of natural products is other example of natural products is ephedrine and this compound is extracted from ephedra sinica it's a plant that produces ephedrine compound and this is the structure and it's a drug and then respiratory elements tetrahydrocannabinol this one is also a medicinally important compound that is obtained from some sort of uh, plants so plants are the rich source of organic compounds and the compounds obtained through plants are mostly bioactive bioactive means they have a medicinal potential they can be used as medi medicinal agents Next is marijuana or uh, geraniol. Marijuana, it's commonly called geraniol. Uh, marijuana, it's botanical name or geraniol, it's chemistry name because it ends with a ol. Ol means it is going to be alcohol and that's why it contains OH group. So it's got two double bonds and one OH group and it's called rose oil. So this compound is present in rose oil that is geraniol. Next is cinnamon aldehyde, cinnamon tea, most commonly used in Asian countries and other people use this cinnamon and that cinnamon contains cinnamon aldehyde that is this one. And then dialyl disulfide, this naturally occurring compound is present in garlic. Mild heating of certain plants afforded perfumed distillates, plants and animals have provided substances used for their biological activity to heal or to kill and form the foundation for folk medicine previously when medicinal chemistry was not developed when companies were not uh, were not established in ancient times people used to extract chemicals from plants and they used to uh, use them for the medicinal purposes most most natural products have usually come from plants and microorganisms due to practical difficulties in extracting them from animals. Plants are particularly interesting because they have the broadest spectrum of biosynthetic capability and produce a wide variety of compounds. They use simple starting materials, water, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, elemental and in salts, phosphorus compounds and salts. Their biosynthetic paths are known in the late 17s, chemists moved from myth and mystery to basics of modern scientific methods to begin to uncover the truth properties of natural extracts from biological systems. They discovered that natural extracts had more complex compositions and properties than salts and minerals. 
This leads Barzillas in 1807 to distinguish between inorganic and organic substances were believed to be obtainable only from organs of living systems and could not be man-made because only living systems have the vital life force. Inorganic materials were from non-living mineral sources. In the 18s, organic chemistry was exclusively the study of natural products. So, to summarize in short, that before in the old times, in the ancient times, people used to think that organic compounds can only be obtained from living source, living organisms. It could be plants, animals, birds, humans. And that theory was known as vital force theory, which means that organic compounds cannot be synthesized in the laboratory and it can be only obtained via plant source or natural product source. So this gave birth to this theory and which later on which was rejected and now we already know that several thousand organic, several million tons of compounds can be synthesized in the laboratory. Natural extracts were subjected to separation into component compounds which were then purified and analyzed. The difficult part in natural product chemistry is the purification of the extracts. You need to, need to be good in extraction in order to extract the compounds from the plant extractor or whatever the extractor is. And you need to be very good at purification and also as characterization. So techniques that are used for characterization of the natural products are mass spectrometry, HPLC, LCMS and IR spectroscopy, then NMR spectroscopy, 1D NMR, 2D NMR, and sometimes crystallography. In the late 1818, synthetic methods were being developed for some of these natural compounds, some examples of natural products, and when they were discovered are as follows. So morphine was discovered in 1817, and it's used as narcotic analgesic. It's a drug. This is the structure of morphine. Then it's triarachine. It's a poison that kills the people and it was discovered in 1818. Then cocaine, again, it's a narcotic stimulant. It's a drug that was discovered in 1859 and then is a nicotine that is also toxic and discovered in 1828. And then we have ground plant. This is the method of general isolation strategy of natural products. So you collect the plant from the field, from bush areas or wherever it is from the garden. And then you ground it, the plant, then solvent extraction, do the solvent extraction, then crude plant extract, then fractionation, then simplified extract, then chromatography, then crude compound, then purify the crude compound, then pure compound, then a structure determination. These are the stages, these are the steps that are involved in the hmm, extraction of a compound from the natural source. Then extract the dried and ground plant material with a suitable solvent, concentrate the extract, separate and purify each component since the concentrate contains an enormous variety of compounds. Early isolations involved selective crystallization of the most dominant component in the mixture. Liquid natural products were distilled, natural organic acids were, iso were isolated by aqueous basic extraction and natural organic bases. Alkaloids were also uh, were isolated by aqueous acidic extraction. Modern chromatographic methods have been greatly developed to isolate and purify a large number of different compounds in very small quantities, column, GC, TLC, HPLC, paper, electrophoresis, ion exchange, etc. Natural products are usually given names that are derived from their species names of the plant or animal or from the biological action or property of the compound. In the late 80s, 1800s, natural products were identified and analyzed by melting point, boiling point, optical rotation, hoping to find correlations between data and structure. This initiative was not successful in predicting structure, but useful data on natural products were obtained. Classical structural elucidation is done by determination of functional groups, determination of the carbon skeleton and the location of the functional groups and degradation to similar fragments like ABC is degraded in A, B and C. Then elemental analysis, reactivity leading to new reactions, stereochemistry, synthesis of the similar fragments ABC and the entire molecule ABC, classification of the compound into a biogenetic family of compounds. More modern structural elucidation and characterization by spectroscopy 1930s UV ultraviolet light of Woodward's rules 1941, 1940s IR infrared spectroscopy note penicillin structure problem in WW2, 1950s NMR spectroscopy. 1960s mass spectrometry and ESR electron spin resonance by 
these are the techniques that are helpful in determining the structure of natural product compounds. Then now more modern techniques ORD, optical rotatory dispersion, series circular diachronism, acidity and basicity measurements PKA, advanced synthetic and biosynthetic technology, X-ray crystallography. Modern methods reduces the necessity of chemical degradation methods, so much less material is required. Why synthesize natural products? Structure determination challenge develop new synthetic methods practical and commercial interests so that's all from this lecture about natural product chemistry but later on i'll be making more videos about natural product chemistry thanks for watching take care bye